So let's break down the major allocations that the Indian Finance Minister has made in this year's budget. There is no doubt that this budget brings some good news for the Indian farmer. The Finance Minister has promised to hike the minimum support price to one and a half times of the cost of the crop. And what is minimum support price, better known as MSP? It is the assured price paid by the government to buy agricultural produce from farmers. This incentive is for farmers producing the Kharif crop. The Modi government also plans to hike the agriculture credit target or in simpler terms credit given only to farmers for the next fiscal by 10% and this takes the total target to a whopping 11 lakh crore rupees. This is the kind of money this government plans to spend to support farmers in India. There's also an emphasis on ensuring that farmers have access to better irrigation facilities. The Indian government has set aside 5,000 crore rupees for a micro irrigation funds. The second big focus area we can tell you and likely uh, the, the most likely the top headline in tomorrow's newspapers is the health sector. The government has made some major announcements here. The first of its kind universal health care scheme in India and arguably the biggest such in the world. Under the scheme, India's most vulnerable families will get a health cover of 5 lakh rupees every year. The government of India will pump in 1,200 crore rupees to set up more than 1 lakh wellness centers to provide quality health care at cheaper rates around the country. Now, the third category that saw major announcements was the micro, small and medium business sector, more commonly known as the MSMEs, that's micro, small and medium enterprises. The finance minister has allocated 3 lakh crore rupees for lending to micro and small businesses. Some MSMEs have got relief from corporate tax. Remember, major industry bodies had urged the government to do so and the government has listened to them. The businesses which have a turnover of up to 250 crore rupees will now have to pay only 25% corporate tax. Earlier that figure was 30%, so that's a drop of about 5%. The roadmap for this rate cut was laid in 2015, in the 2015 budget, but the proposal was not implemented until now. 3,794 crore rupees have been set aside for the micro, small and medium enterprise sector. So we've given you the verdict, we've given you the takeaways and I'm sure many of you were at work when the speech was made by the finance minister and there's nothing like hearing it from the horse's mouth. So we've crunched the almost two hour long speech into a few minutes. Here's a look at who's got what in this budget. My government is committed to the welfare of the farmers. For decades, the country's agricultural policy and programs has remained production-centric. We had sought to effect a paradigm shift. The Honorable Prime Minister gave a clarion call to double the farmers' income by 2022 when India celebrates its 75th year of independence. Our emphasis is on generating higher incomes for farmers. We consider agriculture as an enterprise and want to help the farmers to produce more from the same land parcel at lesser cost and simultaneously realize higher prices for their produce. We are now launching a flagship national health protection scheme to cover 10 crore poor and vulnerable families. This is approximately 50 crore beneficiaries by providing them up to 5 lakh rupees per family per year for secondary and tertiary care hospitalization. This will be the world's largest government-funded health care program. सरकार उज्ज्वला योजना के तहत 8 करोड़ गरीब महिलाओं को मुफ्त गैस कनेक्शन देगी। This is a 3% cess on personal income tax and income tax consisting of 2% cess for primary education and 1% cess for secondary and higher education. In order to take up the needs of education and healthcare and BPL, I have announced in part A of my speech, to fund this I propose to increase the cess by 1%. The 
existing 3% cells will be replaced by a 4% health and education cells to be levied on the tax payable. This would enable us to collect an additional rupees 11,000 crores. Fiscal deficit for 2013-14 was 4.4% of the GDP. The Prime Minister and the government have always attached an utmost importance to prudent fiscal management and controlling fiscal deficit. As honourable members would recall, we embarked upon the path of consistent fiscal reduction and consolidation in 2014. Fiscal deficit was brought down to 4.1 to in 2014-15. 3.9 in 15-16, 3.5 in 16-17. Revised fiscal def deficit estimate for 2017-18 is at rupees 5.95 lakh crores, that is 3.5% of the GDP. I am projecting a fiscal deficit of 3.3% of the GDP for 2018 and 19. The present practice allows the recipients to fix their own emoluments, which invites criticism. I am therefore proposing necessary changes to refix the salary, constituency allowance, other expenses and meeting allowances payable to members of parliament with effect from 1st April 2018. The law will also provide for an automatic revision of emoluments every five years indexed to inflation. I am, the law will also provide, I repeat, for an automatic revision of emoluments every five years indexed to inflation. I am sure the members of parliament will welcome this initiative and which will not suffer any criticism in future. The government does not consider cryptocurrencies as legal tender or coin and will take all measures to eliminate the use of these crypto assets in financing illegitimate activities or as part of the payment system. The government will explore use of blockchain technology proactively for ushering in a digital economy. गरीब की एक चिंता रही है सिर के ऊपर अदर छत की भ्रष्टाचार करके जुटाई गई बेईमानी संपत्ति से दूर गरीब को बस ईमानदारी की कमाई से एक छत एक छोटा सा मकान चाहता है गरीब अपने घर का सपना पूरा कर सके इसके लिए हमारी सरकार उसकी पूरी मदद कर रही है हमने लक्ष्य रखा है कि 2022 तक देश के हर गरीब के पास उसका अपना घर हो इससे लिए ग्रामीण और शहरी इलाकों में प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना शुरू की गई है प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना ग्रामीण के तहत 2017-18 में इक्यावन लाख और वर्ष 2018-19 में इक्यावन लाख यानी एक करोड़ से ज्यादा सिर्फ ग्रामीण इलाकों में बनाए जा रहे हैं शहरी क्षेत्रों में 37 लाख मकान बनाने के लिए मदद स्वीकृत की गई है Many positive changes in the personal income tax rates applicable to the individuals in the last three years. Therefore, I do not propose to make any further changes in the structure of the income tax for individuals. There is a general perception in society that individual business persons are better, uh, have better income as compared to salaries. Class. However, the income tax data suggests that a major portion of the personal income tax collection comes from the salaried class. A life with dignity is a right every individual in general, more so for a senior citizen. To care for those who cared for us is one of the highest honors. To further the objective of providing a dignified life, I propose to announce the following incentives for senior citizens. 
exemption of interest income on deposits with banks and post offices to be increased from rupees 10,000 to rupees 50,000 and TDS shall not be required to be deducted on such income under section 194A. The benefit shall also be for interest on all fixed deposit schemes and recurring deposit schemes.